I would like to share something extremely grievous. An email from Ernie Land to Peter Riley of Forbes Magazine. Forbes Magazine and Peter Riley have written several articles about Kent Hovind over the years. And Ernie Land is going to attempt to slander me on a national level by getting Peter Riley to publish lies about me. From Ernie Land. Hi, Peter. Okay, I'm going to try and skip some of this because it's really long. You will learn, Cindy, over time as I have. My first opinion was she was a really great and sweet person, but over time I saw her demeanor go up and down. I compare her to a bipolar person or maybe someone hooked on something like opioids. I do know she is very bitter and mixes some truth with some lies. Good example is the current case on Doc body slamming her, which was recorded start to finish by Doc on a cell phone. Not one person that I know of that has heard that recording believes Doc body slammed her. She was the aggressor and he never dropped the phone. So if he body slammed her, he did it one handed. Also, one week before she saw the chiropractor who listed it as comparative to a body slam, she was in a car accident, hospitalized, and totaled her car out, all untold in court the first time the judge heard a civil case and a criminal case combined. The appeal will bring up these facts and how the judge violated Kent's civil rights by combining these cases. I do not see Kent losing on his appeal because of these facts which will be brought out. They should have been brought out in the first case, but the attorney felt the recording was a slam dunk in Kent's favor. Next trial, it will all come out, and I hope they arrest Cindy for filing a false report. Ernie. Peter was kind enough to allow me to defend myself. Hi, Peter. Thank you for the chance to give my evidence. The medical statements are attached. Show three lies that Ernie told. Number one, the auto accident was November 2 after the body slam of October 25. Secondly, I did go to the emergency room the night of the body slam where they x-rayed me and tested me for internal bleeding, contrary to what Kent Hovind just broadcast on YouTube that I did not go to the hospital. Thirdly, I went to the chiropractor at their first available appointment October 28, just three days after the body slam, not 10 days later, as Kent Hovind falsely states. Number four, other lies in Ernie's email below. Not a high percentage come poor and needy. Contrary wise, many come with money ready to serve God and give their money for what they feel is a godly cause. Many leave poor and needy after giving all they have, then being discarded for expressing concerns about Kent, Steve, and Ernie's misconduct and mistreatment. 5. I bought three rental properties to replace the $2,000 per month income I received from my California rental property. I live in one with a roommate who pays 300 per month. The second pays 450, the third pays 800. This is still poverty level income, $1,550 per month. Ernie and Kent are trying to portray me as rich when they fleeced me. With Kent and Ernie stealing my 1,300 per month, I was left over $20,000 in debt 
forcing me to sell my car and get a loan to pay down my credit card. With the nine or ten thousand dollars in damages Steve vindictively did vandalizing my property, my total ten forty income for this year will be five thousand dollars. Six. In answer to your question about Kent and Ernie continuing the thirteen hundred per month, yes, that's what I originally asked. But when they showed, quote, anticipatory breach of contract, okay, anticipatory breach is where the person who owes you a contract payment is showing signs that they are going to not pay you. Okay, they're going to breach the contract. Okay, the signs that Kent and Ernie displayed that they were going to breach me are proven in text and emails where they say, The contracts were not legally binding. They say they were not authorized to enter into the contracts. They say there was no contract. They said, if I was a good Christian, I would not want my donations back. They said I was asking for a new contract, which was unreasonable, as though we did not have two contracts already. And that I was an unbiblical, unsubmissive spouse who did not get my wifely paycheck. I realized they were not trustworthy with my funds and I called the loan due and payable. In answer to your question, who have left with finances and promises broken? I know many who left fleeced, poor, slandered, and with PTSD from Kent's spiritual psychological, emotional, malignant, narcissistic abuse, completely disillusioned and or disgusted with Kent Hovind and or Christianity. These names should remain confidential because I have not asked their permission to share them. Further detail for each person is available if they grant permission and if you inquire. The starred people have online expose Kent Hovind statements after spending significant time with Kent Hovind. Jeff, Trevor, Mary, Cindy, Mark, Theo, Jonathan, Nick, Sierra, Hannah, Joanna, my mother. The list of disgruntled grows daily. Many do not want to say anything against Kent Hovind, so they remain silent. Some, like Freddie and Manon and Peacock Joe, have believed Kent Hovind's lies and turned on me to the extent of testifying lies in court and on YouTube about me. Correction on this. Peacock Joe, I believe, believed Kent Hovind's lies. However, Freddie and Manon, I don't believe they believe Kent Hovind's lies. They told me many times they know Kent Hovind is a liar. They know Steve Lynn is a liar. However, they choose to continue to support them. I believe they are in on it and equally criminal. Um, Matt Powell went from love and admiration of me and my Science Center tour to testifying on YouTube against me. Kent Hoven is on my audio recordings lying and slandering me to Matt to turn Matt against me. In person, I heard Kent slander and lie to Brady Byram about me. It is Kent's M.O. Kent slandered and lied about many of us who spoke out against him. He falsely accused on YouTube and in camp meetings. Jeff of being lazy and not willing to work Kent Hovind's schedule. That was a slander and lie. Jeff was one of the best workers there and served Kent faithfully for three years. Kent Hovind slandered and falsely accused Mark of being crazy and rebellious and seeking financial gain from the ministry and of 
also lying about his GoFundMe campaign. This was all slander. Kent Hoven falsely accused and slandered Joanna of being crazy and of being a street woman. Kent Hoven falsely accused Aaron of trying to get financial gain from the ministry and also of being rebellious. Kent Hoven falsely accused Jonathan of trying to take over the ministry. Kent Hoven falsely accused and slandered Theo of trying to take over the ministry. Kent Hoven falsely accused slandered Mary for trying to take over the ministry. He falsely accused Justin of being lazy and not willing to work Kent's schedule. Do you see a pattern here? Kent Hoven accuses anybody who speaks against him of the same things. He is a slanderer to his core. I heard somebody talking about narcissists and saying about how they will defend their image at all costs. That's what you're seeing here. Kent Hovind and Ernie Land and Steve Lynn are willing to defend their image because it's their source of income. Donors, please stop donating. Kent Hovind slandered Cindy and falsely accused her of being bipolar, mentally unstable, contentious, brawling, angry, greedy, and not willing to work Kent's schedule. Yes, of course, rebellious. Ernie and Steve back Kent up on all his lies. Ernie said below that I'm hooked on opioids. Wow, that would be Steve. Steve was busted with heroin. But that's Ernie's golden cow. I did do pot when I was in my 20s, but I'm going to be 60 this year. I haven't done anything for 40 years. Many who know Kent, Steve, and Ernie, what they have done to me for a whole year plus, they would tell you that they would be angry too. And that's an understatement. I'm not perfect, but I'm not a liar, as Ernie slanders below. The judge and four district attorneys all heard the audio. And my other evidence before rendering their guilty verdict. The judge did not suggest combining the criminal and civil cases. Kent's lawyer suggested that. Kent's lawyer suggested that and made the motion to combine the cases. At the motion for retrial, Kent's lawyer claimed he made a mistake asking to combine the cases because it allowed the judge to hear objectionable witness testimony. Indeed, two of my witnesses requested inclusion in the protection order, stating they were scared of Kent Hovind and Steve Lynn. I did not, nor would I ever, file any false report. I sought to keep the event secret for months to protect my husband's reputation. The interview with my mother and the interview with Joanna, they both testify that they saw me within 15 minutes after Kent body slammed me and I told them explicitly, please don't tell. I want to protect Kent's reputation at that time. It was only when Kent lied continuously and refused to help me pay for what he had done that I filed and went public. Ernie, like Kent, fools many with his calm demeanor. There are people who left with a positive experience, but only those who don't stay long. Be sure to require that information if he gives you some list of positive names. All the people I listed as disgruntled or fleeced stayed long term, long enough to see the truth and to become a danger to Kent's false image. Thank you again for listening. Kindly ask for any proofs that you need me to show you. Cindy Lincoln. Let's see if I can get the attachments for you. Okay, first of all, the chiropractor. 
Um, the chiropractor wishes to remain anonymous, so it's blocked out. You can see the dates of treatment were October 28, and I was treated until November 19th. October 28th was only three days after the body slam. Um, let's see which one this was. Okay, here is the Body Slam Emergency Room visit, October 25. Cindy Lincoln. Radiology of Pensacola, October 25. That's where they did the chest x-ray and the spine x-rays. Um... Okay, now this one, Ascension Sacred Heart. Okay, that's in Pensacola. That's where I totaled my car. And here you can see Safeco Auto Insurance. Date of service, November 2. Okay, so Ernie's trying to claim I got in a car wreck and tried to say that my car wreck injuries were Kent's body slam injuries. But as you can see here, the car wreck took place after the body slam, not before. Ernie was intentionally lying and trying to set me up for national slander. Now, this report is from the chiropractor. October 28th, Cindy presents today as a new patient. She has chief complaint of bilateral lower neck pain and mid-back rib cage pain. These complaints are both anterior and posterior. She appears to be somewhat embarrassed to relate that this past Monday, she was the victim of a domestic violence situation. She reports that she was grabbed, elevated, and thrown to her back. She struck the back of her head in between her shoulder blades at her lumbar spine. She describes the pain as dull to sharp off and on. She did receive emergency examination at Monroe County Hospital, Monroeville, Alabama. Today's examination reveals four and a half myospasm to the C5-T1 erector spine, trapezius posterior scalene, and capitis and cervicus groups. This guards her mobility in half bilaterally. She has positive foraminal compression, cervical distraction, and midline soto hall. Unfortunately, her upper extremities reveal no atrophy. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm not going to try and read all this really heavy medical lingo, but suffice it to say that this guy did not just listen to my story and agree with it and write a report. He examined my body. A chiropractor can run their thumbs up and down your spine and tell where things are out of place and where there's inflammation and stuff. And so his conclusion was based on his exam of my body. Um, she has significant soft tissue inflammation and costovertebral junction inflammation and swelling at the rib attachments of T4, T5, T6, T7, and T8. Today's findings appeared to be consistent with the biomechanics behind the traumatic incident as described. So here's the email from Ernie Land with my contract to Cindy Lincoln. Support contract, Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 10, Contract. In order to contract for support of the spouse of Dr. Kent Hoven and to incorporate such support into his intellectual property rights agreement, Ernest Land for Creation Science Evangelism, Inc., CSE Inc. First Party. 
agrees with Cindy Lincoln, second party, for the compensation of $1,300 per month, funded monthly by allowing the use of American Express expenses provided and paid for by Creation Science Evangelism, Inc., a company that holds the rights to Dr. Kent Hovind's intellectual property rights through the sales of said products. All expenses and services per this invoice and on an ongoing monthly basis. This invoice will be for $1,300 to Creation Science Evangelism, Inc. each month on American Express billing for expenses. For this first day of May 2019, valid ongoing for 10 years, renewable for an additional 10 years on May 1st, 2029. Ernest Land, without prejudice, UCC 1308, on behalf of CSE Inc. Can you see why I thought I had a legally binding contract? He's certainly trying to make it look like some kind of a legally binding contract. Now, my first thought was, wow, he didn't even mention the 130000 that I promised. Gee, they must really trust me. They know that I'm going to pay. They didn't even have to mention it. Uh-huh. Now I know why they didn't mention it, because they don't want it to look like they're obligated to repay. Second of all, Ernie told me he was only authorized to make a 10-year contract. Therefore, he was going to make two 10-year contracts to total 20 years. Although they're saying it's only if I'm a spouse and if they run me off, then... Uh, they no longer have to pay because I'm not a spouse. However, I sure as heck didn't know that at the time that they were planning to run me off. Les wrote up this second contract in my own writing and got Kent to sign it. So this is dated six months after the original contract, 11-17 of 2019. Executed this day in Conecuh County, Alabama, agreement between Cindy Lee Lincoln and Creation Science Evangelism, CSE, or Dinosaur Adventureland, DAL, in exchange for Cindy's tens of thousands of dollars. Now, at that point, I hadn't even added it up yet. I'm not finished spending my whole 130 yet, so I'm just approximating. In exchange for Cindy's tens of thousands of dollars of contributions this year, she shall receive 1300 per month from said ministry for personal use for 21 years. Um, Kent had changed it from 20 years to 21 years. I didn't understand it at the time. Now I suspect he was intentionally trying to make it look like a different contract so that it wouldn't be legally binding. I don't know what he was doing, but that's the person that I have come to know. A, manip a manip manipulative scam artist. Okay, additionally, in exchange for her labor for the ministry, ultimately done for Christ Jesus, she shall receive housing, food, and personal necessities. Witnessed by Julie Schunk, who was Kent Hovind's secretary at the time, Um, I don't know why Ernie Land's signature isn't here. And then Kent Hovind's signature, founder of CSE and DAL. Since he was the founder of the ministry, I thought his signature was enough. And then in the left margin, you will see Brady Byram, who also witnessed and self-identifies as CSE trustee. So in closing, those are the documents I presented to Peter Riley in order to show that Ernie was lying and Peter was shocked. He said, wow, I thought Ernie was such a nice guy. He's always been such a nice guy all, over all the years. I said, yeah, tell me about it. Fooled me too. Purpose of this 
video is to demonstrate how Kent Hovind's money handler, Ernie Land, is just like Kent, a slanderer to the core, willing to do anything to preserve their image, and therefore the mass slander and smear campaign and shunning and abuse campaign in order to intimidate me and get me to shut up. Donors, please, this is not a ministry. This is a money grab or some kind of a drug cover-up or something. It is not a ministry. Don't forget the scripture that says, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That means spoken God's word. Prophesied means spoken God's word. And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works. People say, Kent Hovind has led many to the Lord and spread the gospel and done many wonderful works. Therefore, I'm supposed to overlook this sin. Therefore, the donors are supposed to overlook this sin. Verse 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. The Lord cares if they are raping people financially, emotionally, spiritually, and all of the above. It says you will know them by their fruits. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. It doesn't say the fruit of the Spirit is how many souls did you lead and how much did you preach. Okay, a preacher, the conduct of a preacher is important to God. Here it says, a bishop must be blameless. The husband of one wife, not four. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior. Slander is not good behavior. Shunning your wife is not good behavior. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not covetous. That means he doesn't want other people's stuff. One that rules well his own house. I don't think he ruled me well. I don't think his children and his former wives think he ruled them well either, seeing as they won't speak to him. Verse 11, not slanderous, faithful in all things. Faithful means that you don't have to watch them. They're going to keep their word even if you're not watching, even if you don't have a contract. Faithful. Point being, God cares about the conduct of his preachers. You can't just say he preaches the gospel and so therefore Cindy shut up. That's not God's heart. Here is another beautiful verse where the Lord shows that he cares about the conduct of his preachers. Ezekiel 34. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe yourself with wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Okay, neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. 
Yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely, because my flock became a prey, a wolf is predatory. A Kent Hovind, Ernie Land, and Steve Lynn are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what Theo Valentine said. That's what Christopher Johnson said. That's what all the documentaries on Kent Hovind say. Wolves travel in a pack and they attack those sheep that are weaker. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but my shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them.